Uh, hi, my name is Will Thistle. Um, I work for Bradley A. Rent, Bolt Cummings, where I am a tax attorney. Um, I went to Birmingham Southern, uh, majored in accounting, graduated in 2002. I then proceeded to go to Tuscaloosa, attended the University of Alabama, received a master's in tax accounting in 2003. And after working the Big Four for a couple of years in Atlanta, uh, went to the University of Georgia for law school where I graduated in 2008. At what point did you sit for the exam? I sat for the exam in November of 2003, um, which worked out well for me because I did not start working until two weeks before. Uh, at the time, I was working for Deloitte, and they, their policy, at least in the Atlanta office, was not to allow us to start after the fall busy season had ended. And so my entire star class began on, I think, right around October 20th, when I finished grad school in August, until really, you know, until the end of October, I could really just kind of focus in and study for the exam and was able to do that with only a couple weeks, really, of work prior to sitting for the exam. Last pencil and paper exam. I was going to ask you that question. Mm -hmm. So I've been asking some others, you know, what advice would you give, but I don't think it's necessarily applicable anymore, but, but tell us what your advice would be. No, I, I would say I was fortunate. I received a scholarship and was able to take Becker, which is a review course. I think to the extent that anyone can take a review course for an exam of this nature, it's certainly in their best interest, it's, it's advisable to do so because it helps you, you know, the amount of material that is out there and that is presented to you is so vast, you need someone to help you narrow it and focus your study, particularly if you are working, because it's incredibly difficult to go to work all day long and then come in and then try to study, you know, especially if you're going to study way more information that is actually going to be tested on the exam. How did the scholarship make a difference to you? Well, you know, like I said, I went to Birmingham Southern, which is a, it's a private school, and uh, while I had some scholarship money, you know, it certainly was not uh, a full ride by any stretch of the imagination. And so the scholarship that the Educational Foundation provided was certainly beneficial to me. It helped me progress through uh, the accounting major and, you know, finish up my degree and move forward. You've been a member of the Society for some time. Mm -hmm. What has that membership meant to you? It has provided me with a tremendous network, you know, of, of professionals many of whom are clients, many of whom are friends, and many of whom simply provide me with a good resource to balance ideas off of. I think I am in contact, as part of my law practice, I'm in contact with CPAs around the state almost on a daily basis with various issues that come up and things of that nature, whether it be, you know, pieces, you know, new pieces of legislation or just, you know, one client wants to know how other people are doing this and just trying to get a feel for it. Society provides a wonderful directory to its membership so that you can branch out and talk to young members, older members, you know, people who have seen a lot of different things. You, and you can get, you know, it, it exposes you to a variety of people that you might not be able to meet simply just by being a CPA. You know, it, it, is, a, it is a group that is close and the membership uh, has, a, has a number of advantages, but I think the primary advantage is you know, just the connection to the other members. So you may spend all of your time trying to accumulate enough CPE or CEU. So you have to do some continuing for your law degree as well. I do. The LE that we have to do for the law degree is, is only it's only ten hours a year as opposed to forty for the CPA and most of my education overlap. The only real problem I have is getting the A and A out. What's been the biggest surprise to you as your career has progressed? Probably the transition from accounting to law and how the more things change, the more they stay the same. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's funny how you still bump into the same people. When I go to conferences, I still bump into people I knew from Deloitte. As a matter of fact, I was working on uh, a matter this morning that had been referred to us from Deloitte. The guy was a senior manager when I was at Deloitte. And so it's, it's funny how you, know, you maintain those connections and you're still working with the same people and a lot of times on the same clients. I didn't realize that I would still be as connected to the CPA side. When I went to law school and when I began my practice, I don't think I realized how just in touch the, you know, the, the tax law side is to the accounting side of things um, in everyday practice. I call it Montgomery incest, but it works for every place it does. that you are. It does. And it's sort of got its pluses and minuses. Mm -hmm. Certainly. What's the goal? that you have next on your horizon? Where are you headed? 
Where am I headed? I think for the first time in my life, I'm actually a place where I don't really want to head anywhere else. Um, I am settled in, I think, on the law. I'm very pleased to be doing what I'm doing. And I like where I am, and I like the people I work with. And I very much enjoy my clients and the type of practice I have. And so I think for uh, next goal on the horizon, it's probably just to keep on keeping on, and just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so I'm enjoying it right now, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. And you've come to a kind of a delicious nexus, though, as you were saying, between accounting I have. Uh, it, it, it is, you know, it's, it's funny uh, because a lot of what I do, I, there are a lot of aspects that's supposed to my practice, one of which is uh, tax controversy. And a lot of tax controversy work involves me looking through audit work papers and reviewing tax returns and reviewing audit reports, which is something that I think you would think of as, a more, as traditionally more of a tax accountant role, but it's one that I'm able to walk uh, very naturally and comfortably. And it's because of the CPA training that I've been received previously. What a blessing that you get to bring a lot of tools to the table. I've been very fortunate in my life to have met and worked with a lot of really bright, really talented folks who were all kind enough to take some time and some interest in that. Bruce Ely, Jimmy, and myself write a, uh, a weekly column during the legislative session uh, that appears in the ASCPA e-zine. And that column gets more attention. It is. Uh, I did not realize how much attention it would have gotten and how much apparently the, the readers appreciate it, which is always nice because we put uh, a good bit of time into it and review a lot of it. And it's, and it, it's nice for us because people are going to call, you know, our clients call us and ask, what about this? Have you heard about this? And by virtue of having, you know, worked on this, this article every week, you know, we, we know what's going on.